Hey there! I'm Sarah A. Christman, the author of the Tales of Chetsumoka, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the pencil. In my book, This Victorian Life, I go into the history of pens a bit. I talk about the history of quill pens that uh, most Americans are familiar with those from pictures of the signing of our Constitution. And also in the book, I talk about steel nibbed pens, which were mass produced starting in around the 1830s and were the pen of choice for most of the 19th century. And I also, in the book, go into the history of fountain pens a bit. But today I thought it was high time I give the humble pencil its due. <laughs> As you probably know if you've been following me for any length of time, I write all my manuscripts by hand. What? Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. I don't really have time to go into them today, but suffice it to say it's better for the creative process than writing things on a computer. And what you might not know, because I haven't made it very explicit, is that I use pencils a lot more than I use pen when I'm writing my manuscripts. And if when I grab, uh, so this is the manuscript for Love Will Find a Wheel. If I grab one of them out of my shelf, or off of my shelf where I keep them, the p pages in pen stand out as the exception rather than the rule. And the reason I use pencil a lot more than I use pen, it's pretty simple. Pen can be pretty messy. Liquid ink dribbles a lot and makes a mess. I can write in pencil wherever I like and I don't risk making my clothes or my house look like, look like a Dalmatian. <laughs> the history of the pencil goes back a very long way. Just how far back it goes depends on your definition of a pencil. Some historians trace it back to artists' tools made of chalk or colored earth used by the ancient Egyptians to make line drawings. The word pencil itself goes back to Roman times and referred to a small brush like the one still in use in China and Japan for calligraphy. The Romans also had another writing implement called a stylus, which was a slim metal wand used for writing on wax or ivory tablets. By the Middle Ages, merchants were using metal styluses to write down lists on surfaces covered with chalk. Now there is inherent but often overlooked relationship between a writing tool and the material on which one is writing. Iron styluses like the Romans had worked well for marking wax tablets because they were essentially just carving out information into the wax. When people wanted to put information onto a surface rather than carving it out, they experimented with softer metals. Lead and various lead alloys were popular for a while, and then in the 16th century the discovery of a large supply of graphite in England's Lake District led to the creation of the modern pencil as we now know it. Now that I've gotten up to the 16th century and the widespread use of graphite pencils, I have to explain something that gets really confusing, so bear with me. We still call the interior of a pencil in English the lead of the pencil. And the reason for that is that what we now call graphite used to be called black lead. And here's where it gets really, really confusing. Because most of the time in English, when we refer to lead, we're referring to a very specific metal and it's the one that a chemist would point to on the periodic table as true lead. But historically, when people were referring to lead, they weren't always necessarily referring to that same one from the periodic table. In the 16th century, what we now call graphite was called black lead. White lead was what we now call lead, but white lead could also refer to tin. I don't know why, <laughs> but it did. White lead could also refer to various lead alloys, and it also referred to a type of paint. So it gets really confusing. And if that weren't confusing enough, some writers mix up all three terms and use them almost interchangeably, and it's really hard to tell which type of lead they're talking about. But the important thing to remember is that as of the 16th century, graphite, i.e. black lead, was the preferred material for pencils. and 
that's actually how we get our word graphite, because the word graphite didn't come up until the 18th century, and it came, for, it came from a Greek root meaning to write, and it was because graphite had become such a preferred material for the insides of pencils by then. People wrapped sticks of graphite in string to make it less fragile and to keep their hands clean when they were using it. And it wasn't long before enterprising folks came up with the now familiar format of a stick of graphite inserted into a stick of wood. Mass production of pencils started in the 17th century, and by the time of the Industrial Revolution there was a worldwide pencil-making industry. After a while, people worked out that grinding up the graphite and mixing it with clay made for a far more durable pencil core. Some of the world's most famous pencil companies, like Faber-Castell, can trace their origins back hundreds of years, and they're still going strong today. Personally, I'm really fond of the Ticonderoga pencils. This is my favorite brand. I find that they break a lot less easily than most other readily available pencil brands, at least the ones available around here. And they are very reliable, which I really like. The yellow color started in the 1890s, which is fun because that's the period that Gabriel and I focus on and that we just love. The yellow color of pencils was started by the Kuinur Pencil Company. That's a company that named itself after the Kuinur Diamond, if you're familiar with that history. If you're not, you should look it up because that's a fun history. Not really pertinent to my book, so I'm not going to be doing a video on it, but it's a cool history. Anyhow. The Kuinur Company was so successful at marketing their yellow pencils that other pencil companies started painting theirs yellow as well. Before that, the pencils had off mostly been unpainted because they wanted to show off what high quality wood they were using, and so painting them was a really bold move. It was like saying, our wood is so good, and everyone knows it's so good, we don't even have to show it to you. In the Tales of Chetsumoka, the character who is always carrying around a pencil is Felix. Of course, because he is our reporter. And so a writer always has to have something to write with, so he's always got a pencil with him. And in my latest book, Sparks Press, which is mostly about Felix, I gave him a particularly small pencil. A little one, like the one I use in my aid memoir. And the reason for doing that in the book, it it was also that I could line up a, a gag in one particular scene because there's a scene where he goes to see Ethel to ask her something and her pet owl steals his pencil from him. Now with a standard sized pencil the owl could hold on to it but then he would try to take it away and then I have this then he would have this little owl clinging to the pencil which is Funny, but it's even funnier if you can't get the pencil away at all. So <laughs> that's why I have him have a particularly small pencil. It was so that they could, I could set up that joke about Ethel telling him, well, she's just going to hold it until either she loses interest, and if you, if you tug on it too much, it's going to break. So just let her have it. She's got it. It's hers now. I'll give you another one. Now, I think anyone with a scrap of intelligence realizes that the wood pencil has been around for a very long time. A lot of people don't realize that the mechanical pencil has been around a long time, too. Ever since that load of graphite was discovered in the Lake District in the 16th century, people were working out different ways to hold the graphite. Some of the earliest techniques involved wrapping it with string, which I mentioned earlier. Sometimes they would put it in a piece of a vine that they would cut and then stick the graphite in there. By the 19th century, they were coming up with really cool little mechanical devices for holding the graphite. And this particular one comes from the late 19th century. So that's a 19th century Victorian mechanical pencil, which is pretty darn fun. It's hard to find the right size graphite for it anymore. So I don't get to use it as often as I would like because it's very hard to replace the lead, i.e. graphite. <laughs> and this particular one actually has a loop on it 
so that if I wanted to, I could wear it on my chatelaine. <laughs> so the next time someone asks you, how old are really high-tech pencils? You can answer, older than you might think. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a nice thumbs up and remember to tell your friends about my books. Happy reading!